Most drone pilots know the importance of terrain following, but what exactly is a DEM, and what's a DSM, and what's a DTM, and how do they relate to each other? Let me try and break it down for you. Essentially, DEM stands for Digital Elevation Model, and so Digital Elevation Model includes both the terrain as well as the surface. And then, so separately taken, so the DTM, which uh, the full name for that is Digital Terrain Model, it essentially includes only the points of the terrain. So this means it doesn't include anything that's above the terrain, such as trees, buildings, etc. While digital surface model, that includes everything. Uh, sometimes we can see that the term uh, DEM, it's used a bit interchangeably with both of them, but it's important to know the difference. That's why I think it could be important that we now take one example that we faced ourselves uh, and then try to understand what uh, issues could there be. So back in 2021, our team was in Papua New Guinea looking for the lost airplane of Amelia Earhart. And when having to fly over the jungle, we actually faced with several of these issues. Firstly, that we didn't have a proper understanding of how high is the uh, surface model exactly, so how tall are the trees. We had some also basic uh, model of the terrain, but of course we wanted to fly in relation not to the surface model, but to the terrain model. Now, let me maybe share with you the screen of UGCS where I can kind of slowly take you through our whole process and then show you what's really cool about uh, being able to see the DSM separately. Okay, so here you can see this is a location in Papua New Guinea and you can see also I have a photogrammetry route planned here. Now let's open up the elevation profile and let's take a look at this. So, uh, of course, the white line here, you can see this is the flight line itself, and this gray area, this is the elevation model. But what exactly is that, and what's the default data? Let's take a look at that. Uh, if we go here into the map layers of UGCS, and then in the elevation tab, so we can see that by default, UGCS is using SRTM one arc second data. But what does this mean? One arc second means that the distance between two consecutive elevation points is 30 meters. Well, for many applications, this might be okay. There are also some where you might want a more accurate model. Uh, so while guys were on this expedition, what they did is they flew with LiDAR over this area. They collected their own LiDAR data and made a separate digital surface model, which can then be used. And now we can go here in the map layers, elevation, and we can take this one meter digital surface model and we can first import it here under the terrain. And we can see sort of what results we get. And of course, uh, you can see that currently our flight line looks a bit like the uh, Intel stock or the Dow Jones average graph, right? And you can't really do a drone flight like this because you will waste a lot of uh, battery. So of course you want the flight to be smooth. And also it's important to understand, so at what distance will the drone be from the surface at each point? And so what can we do here? Now with the newest version of UGCS, so with version 5.6, it is possible to set the digital surface model separately from the uh, elevation or the terrain model. And so to do that, now let's actually move this DSM in here. And now you will be able to see that this is already here in the uh, surface tab so currently GCS is the only flight planning software which allows you to separately import a digital surface model. Now, what does this mean? This means that here, as you can see in the elevation window, this green area that's highlighted here, this is the DSM. And this still means that the flight itself is planned in accordance with the terrain model or the elevation model. However, you are able to see the surface that's lying on top of that. So you can see, for instance, how close will the flight be at some point to the surface? For instance, at this specific location, you can see that the flight will be about 37 meters above that surface point. However, there's more things we can do to uh, adjust this a bit further and make the flight even smoother. One of the first things that you can do is, if we go here in the advanced tab, is you can adjust the AGL tolerance. By default, it's set to three meters, and this means with how many meters of change in elevation, UGCS will insert another waypoint in there. For instance, if I change this to one meter, now you'll see that we'll have way more points, but the flight will follow the terrain uh, closer. But if I set this to five meters, you can see we now have less points. But one quite important thing which we actually added in the latest version of UGCS is the possibility to smooth out the trajectory. 
So you might notice that at some points of this flight, the drone does go down a bit too much where it has these sort of dips, right? And this wastes battery. And in order to avoid that, you can use this new experimental trajectory smoothing. You have to enable it through the uh, menu since like I said, now it's still experimental, but how does this work? You can see there are two different parameters. Number one is the minimal gap. So the minimal gap is a gap which the drone will skip when flying over a certain area. For instance, if we set this minimal gap to, let's say something like 100 meters, then you might now notice that as it's recalculating the route, some of these parts, it flattens out. You see here, for instance, and in these locations as well. So this means it doesn't waste battery going down and going up in those areas. And you can play around with this parameter. For instance, if we increase this value, you'll see that the length of those parts of the survey lines, they will become longer. For instance, now you can see where the drone is flying above this uh, tiny little forested uh, area and where it's flying over the river, it just flies simply in a straight line. This is useful, firstly, like I said before, to save battery and second, with certain sensors such as the uh, Census Magaro, which are swinging on the ropes below the drone, this means that the sensor will swing less and that the collected data will be better. And the second parameter here is the maximum slope. And so with the slope parameter, you can adjust the slope at which the drone flies over certain areas of the route. For example, if I have the maximum slope set to 90 degrees, you might not notice a very huge difference initially, aside from a few spots in the route. However, if I set it to 10%, then now you will notice a lot more difference here. And so you can even make it so that, let's say over this whole line, the drone flies without moving itself down. And this can be very useful, especially when you're flying over rapidly changing terrain, because this allows you to actually save quite a lot of uh, battery by being able to make all of these adjustments. And combined with the fact that now you can actually see the digital surface model below the flight trajectory, this allows you to understand how much can you adjust the overall glide slope of the route in order to be able to avoid hitting anything that's above the surface. Now we can even, for instance, decrease the maximum slope further and smooth out some of these segments. So if you wanna try all these new features out, make sure you head to our website, ugcs.com and grab the latest version of UGCS and take the 14 day free trial link down in the description. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe to this video to see more cool drone content and see you in the next one. Bye.